Hi, I'm Sharon. I'm here at Courtney Recreation again, uh, this time in the Lewis Center uh, in the craft room. Today we're going to be working on balance. So I'm glad you joined in. A few things before we start so that I can make sure that you are prepared or set up properly. Things that you, will, uh, you might want to have handy. One is to have a chair or a wall or maybe set up near a counter so that when we're working on some of the balance poses, uh, we have something to hold on to. We won't need it all the time, but we will need it for a few pieces. Second is the surface that you're standing on. So if you are, if you have a yoga mat, great. The stickiness of the yoga mat will definitely help. Help. If you have a really thick yoga mat, it can actually make challenge, make balance more challenging. So you can stay with that if you're looking for extra challenge, or maybe move to a different surface. And then with the surface. Um, if you don't have a yoga mat and your floor is quite slippery, then you want to maybe wear a pair of shoes that has a, a sticky uh, grip to the sole of the shoe. Um, or try bare feet, that might help as well. So you want to make sure that you feel comf comfortable and confident as you're going through some of these exercises and movements. All right, so we're going to begin uh, either standing or sitting and either which, whichever one you're choosing, I'd like you to be able to feel your feet on the floor. I'm going to go for sitting. If you're choosing sitting, make sure that your feet are flat on the floor, comfortable, fully making contact with the floor and that your body feels comfortable. If you're standing, you can be feet hip width or wider. So take a moment to get yourself settled and let's start with a breath in and let it go with a sigh. <sighs> so we'll begin first by checking in and starting off with the feet. So noticing the feet. Noticing the surface that they're resting on, the points of the feet that are making contact with that surface. If you're standing, it'll feel quite different than if you're sitting, so notice that weight bearing through the feet. And notice anything else about the feet. How are they feeling today? Are there any tender spots? Are they tight? Do they feel open? Relaxed? And then briefly scan the rest of the body as well. What are you experiencing in your body today? If there's any unnecessary tension or holding, can you let that go? And then shift your focus to your breath. We're going to begin today with a few exaggerated breaths. So, if it's comfortable to do so, bring one hand onto the belly and one hand onto the chest. And we're going to do three of these deeper breaths, breathing in fully. Belly expands, chest expands, front body and back body. And as you exhale, let it be an exaggerated or a complete exhale as well, letting the body almost feel like it's shrinking. So deep, full breath in, right up to the collarbones, right down to the pelvic floor. Exhaling, shrinking the size of the rib cage, drawing the belly softly in towards the spine. And one more of those. Deep breath in. And out. And then allow your breath to come to something that feels more natural, neutral. You can keep your hands on your chest and belly if that feels comfortable there, or simply let them rest at your sides or maybe in your lap if you're seated. 
And we'll pause here for maybe another seven to 10 comfortable breaths. Checking in as well to see if any tension has crept in or if there's anything else that would like to release. Last breath here, let a breath in, let it go. <sighs> All right, so now might also be a time to press pause on this recording and make any particular movements with your body. So if you noticed uh, anything that came up in your body scan, certain parts of the body that would like some additional uh, attention or warm up. Our warm up is going to be very brief today. Um, so feel free to press pause and join back. If you are wearing socks, now might be a good time to let go of those. Um, socks can either restrict the feet or they can simply cause slipperiness. So uh, we want again, have that feeling of the best ability that we can. And if you're seated, come on up to standing. Uh, move the chair off to the side, but not too far away because we will need it a little bit later or some other surface if you're working with that. Um, so there are many aspects of balance and today we're going to focus on uh, body awareness and working with trust. So while there'll be lots of reminders to breathe, we'll be pausing often to check in, um, work with what is available for you and your balance today. Some days our balance feels good and some days not. A big part of this is to also develop a familiarity with balance and to hopefully start to bring um, habit. So uh, as we go further in, I'll give you different ways that you can incorporate some of these movements into your everyday activities. All right, so let's start first down at the feet with some gentle movements. Just gonna roll ourselves forward and back into the balls of the feet and the heels. Um, now, here's our first lesson in balance, is to uh, not grip or lock the joints. So if you hold a lot of tightness or tension in the ankles, the knees, the hips, the spine, um, when you start to shift weight forward, it's going to feel like you're gonna fall onto your face. And then when you shift your heels back, you might feel like you're gonna fall backwards. So I wanna have this feeling of looseness, so maybe even checking in to see, can you softly bend through the ankles, the knees and the hips a few times and how does that feel? And then can you keep that softness as you come back to shifting weight forward and backwards into the balls of the feet and into the heels? It doesn't have to be a big movement. We're just waking up the feet and starting to wake up the rest of the body as well. Let go of some of um, any holding that might be present. Good, and then let's add the hips now. So get, letting this movement get a little bit bigger. So now, as I shift my weight back uh, into the heels, I'm gonna shift my buttocks back behind me and my body comes forward as the counterweight. And then the reverse. When I shift my weight forward into the balls of the feet, I'll let my hips come forward and my torso come back as the counter. And then allow that to become a flowing rhythm, again at your pace. Couple more. Good, and then let's switch to side to side. And let's begin with that smaller movement. So just focusing on the feet, shifting weight, not only from right foot to left, but from inner to outer edges of the feet.
and then letting it get a little more whole body. So letting the hips get involved, swaying the hips, and allowing the upper body to be the counterweight. And again, you can make this as small or as big as you like, as slow or fast as feels comfortable for you. And then lastly, a little bit of a twist. And with the twist, you can allow um, opposite heel to lift. So for instance, as I'm turning to the left, I'm shifting weight into my left foot and I'm allowing my right heel to lift off the floor and vice versa. Some easy movement into the spine here. And again, further waking up the feet. Good, come back to center, come back to focusing on the feet and in particular the toes. So pick your toes up and spread them as wide apart as you can and then see if you can bring them back down to the floor spread apart. Don't worry if you can't. And then pick the toes up and curl them under like you're trying to tuck your toenails to the, towards the floor. And then pick your toes up, spread them apart and then pick them up and tuck them under. Good. And then discover as many different ways as you can move your feet around on your floor or your mat. So how many different ways can you shift weight? How many different places can you hold weight in the feet? How many different directions can you uh, send movement? Again, waking up the feet, starting to bring some extra blood flow down there. Good. And then coming back to center and coming to stillness again. So we're going to pause here for a moment and check in. So just feeling right down to the feet through the whole body and just notice. You don't have to be able to identify anything in particular. Just notice. All right. We're going to begin with a simple movement of walking forward and backwards. So if you have a yoga mat, you can use that as your uh, kind of the space that you're moving forward and backwards on. If you don't, then roughly you know, maybe four or six feet. Uh, so you have space wherever you might have space. If you're in a smaller space where you're working today, then the, you'll just move forward and backwards a few more times. Don't worry if it's clumsy. Don't worry if it's awkward. Uh, again, we're in that kind of warm up stage. Here's our first opportunity to work on trust. So I'm feeling a little bit imbalanced today in that backwards movement. I'm trying to go with the wobble. Now for those of you that have been coming to my classes for a while, we've been working on balance. and We had a little balance challenge um, through the month of February and a little bit in March and probably heard me say that a lot. Befriend the wobble. And that's a big part of what we're going to work with today um, is befriending that wobble that happens. So as we're doing this preparatory movement, just noticing how tense you're becoming if you are, noticing um, how relaxed you are, noticing your breath, what kind of thoughts are going through your mind as you're doing this simple movement of walking forward and backwards. If it's really challenging, step the feet wider apart from each other. So make your stance wider. And if you're thinking, wow, this is pretty easy, I'm really comfortable, I'm ready to take it to that next step, then start to step more like you are walking on a balance beam. So I have uh, quite spongy mats underneath my feet, so this is adding some very interesting balance for me today. What you're standing on, what kind of shoe you're wearing, if you're wearing a shoe, that can all make a difference as well. And we want to try to play with all of these different things to develop a, a variety of um, practices and then we have that uh, lovely agility and ability that comes in. So now we're going to start the cross pattern movement. So one foot steps across the pathway of the other and I'm going to add in another piece here is visual focus. So rather than looking at me that might send you uh, off balance um, try to find a spot perhaps just above the screen that you're looking at something that's not moving that's one thing that can help with balance. The other is letting the arms come out to help. So especially if we're in the initial stages of developing our balance or if we're just having a day that things feel off, we have these other pieces that we can add in. 
If you do start to feel that wobble, try not to panic. Keep breathing. If you need to touch a foot down to the ground, let it. So let's do this one more time here. Good, and then come back to center. Come back to stillness. Come back to that pause and just notice. <sighs> if you felt some of that kind of anxiety and tension arise in the body, can you let it dissipate? Perhaps letting a breath in, let it go with a sigh. If a lot of that anxiety or tension came in, you can even kind of shake it out a little bit. Sometimes even just bringing the focus down to the feet, feeling the feet, making contact with the floor. Slowing the breath down, bringing the breath into the belly. So now, round two, you're going to want something to hold on to. Chair, counter, table. Uh, make sure that whatever it is feels stable underneath your hand. So if I'm using a chair and I have a yoga mat, I'll make sure that all four feet are on the chair so that as I apply pressure, it's not going to go anywhere. If you don't have a yoga mat, you might want to have it set up so that it's against something like a wall that isn't going to move. So do a quick kind of check of the props that you have are they set up in the right place? Do you need to renegotiate? And then come to a position standing beside your support, whatever that is, um, maybe a foot or two away from, not so close that you feel crowded in, not so far that you feel like you have to really reach for that support. All right, we're going to begin with bringing support on uh, one side of the body. So the hand that's holding on to the desk or the chair, um, that's, that leg is going to be our standing support to begin. So we're going to begin by shifting weight. We're going slow motion. We're going to start to develop some of those muscles as well for um, steadiness and coming in and out, the transition muscles. I'm slowly going to lift the one foot off the ground, let it come up however high feels comfortable, and then slow motion bring it back down to the floor, let it completely touch down, shift back to a balanced position in the feet, and then repeat, shift weight. Again, let this object hold you for this one. Slowly bring the foot up, slowly bring it down, shift your weight to center, and repeat, so keep going with this. We're going to do maybe six to 10 of these. Think of these um, kind of like reps when you go to the gym and lift weights. We're doing the same thing here. We're creating these repetitions to start to build a particular um, pattern in our mind and in our muscles. We're using the hand support here so that we stay nice and steady. Good, let's call this last one. Good, so now that you know what the exercise is, if you need to turn away from the camera, you're all right. Um, if you do have a support that can move with you, then go ahead and move that. We start off in our balanced position, and then we begin shifting weight over to the standing side, using your chair or table or wall for support, slowly lifting the other foot up off the floor, however high feels comfortable for you slow motion, bring it back down, slowly let it touch down, come back to center, and then repeat. So again, now that you have some familiarity with this as well, you can start to focus on um, other aspects. So the rest of the body. Are you tensing through your jaw? Have you furrowed your brow? Uh, what's your breath like? Has it become shallow? Are your hands in fists? So if any of this tension or um, holding has come into the body, can you 
allow it to transition out. Last one. Okay, come back to center. Come back to that sensation of being grounded through both feet and notice. Okay, now we're going to lose some control here. So you might want to be near your support in case you uh, need it for uh, something to help catch you. So now we're going to, same thing, we're going to shift weight over to one side. Again, try not to look at me because I will be moving around a lot. Um, lift one foot up, bring some maybe arms out to the side, and then start to move around. Uh, think about befriending the wobble. So maybe imagine that a big breeze has come into the room and it's blowing you around. Um, if you find that this is a really easy uh, exercise to do, try moving your eyes around the room slowly at first uh, in increments. And if that's really easy, you can also close your eyes for a moment and that'll definitely get the wobble going. If your foot touches down, let it. Simply pause and start again if, you, if that happens. Rather than kind of jumping up and down, let your body come to that pause for a moment if it touches and then come back to it. Maybe try doing things like wiggling your toes or your fingers. Good, and then come back to center. Let a big breath in, let your arms reach up overhead and then as you exhale, release. <sighs> and check in. Notice what sort of thoughts came up for you. What sort of sensations came into your body? Were you able to trust? Did you feel confident? If some tension came in and if it's still here, can you let it go? If some of that anxiety came in, feel your feet making contact with the ground. Let yourself be grounded. Good. And then let's repeat that on the other side. So again, if you want to use a support, uh, make sure that's within reach. Shift your weight and then start to lose control. Trust the wobble. Often one side of our body has a better um, sense of balance than the other. So this might be your better side, this might be your trickier side. Again, if you're finding that this is really easy, move your eyes around the room. Wiggle your fingers and your hands. Move your foot. Close your eyes. And if you touch down, each time you touch down, rather than just jumping back up, pause, maybe even breathe deeply, and then begin again. So we wanna build our um, ability to do this, right? We wanna get comfortable with this idea of loss of control. Good, and then come back again to center. Big breath in, let the arms come up and exhale, let them go. <sighs> Good, pause, close your eyes, and again, check in, head to toe, inside, outside. What are you noticing? What are you feeling? So that might be plenty of balance work for you today. If so, uh, feel free to stop this recording and come back to the remainder another day. If you're feeling like, yep, yeah, I'm ready for just a little bit more, we have one more exercise to do together. And this is one that, again, we were working with in our classes before we um, had to socially isolate. So uh, this is, we've started calling it the sock putting on pose. And you don't have to actually put socks on. You don't even have to be able to reach your feet for this one. It's again, just another way of starting to develop our uh, resilience, our ability to kind of bounce back, to uh, endure change. So really timely things that we can work on here. 
the piece of this movement is um, has to do now with freeing up movement in the pelvis and the spine. So there's two versions of this. And I'll also give you a version sitting in the chair, but I'll start with the standing version and you can kind of get started with that. So it's the shifting of weight again, making sure that you're able to breathe, finding a focal point, and then as you're lifting your leg up, as though you were gonna be putting on a sock or a shoe, we wanna soften. So there's this rounding that happens and I'll turn to the side. So if I did have a shoe, I would have to do something like this to put it on or a sock. So it's not a rigid lifting up, it's a softening, a loosening, curling. Uh, my gaze is looking slightly forward at a focal point so that I feel stable and comfortable. I could look a little further down. I could not maybe up. That'll probably bring in a feeling of kind of jarring in the neck. And that felt also like it was really affecting my balance. So start whenever you're ready to do this sort of simple movement of lifting the foot up and reaching towards the, the foot as though you were going to be putting on a sock. Try different uh, ways of doing this as far as where your gaze is. Is your gaze close to the floor? Is it in, in front of you? What happens if you kind of look up? If you're wanting to try this in a chair, sit fairly close to the edge of the chair so that when you do the rounding, you don't bump into the back of the chair. Um, again, you can kind of feel that sense of grounding through the one leg and we're rounding towards the foot. So this is version number one. I'll go into version number two here as well, which is bringing in some external rotation into the leg. Um, so you can either alternate from side to side. If you haven't been doing that, you can. You can keep going with the same side. I'll switch us in a moment. Um, now I'm going to bring the knee out to the side so that now more the inner edge of my foot is reaching towards me. Some people will find this movement easier. Some people will find it harder. Again, there's that, that releasing in the back body that needs to happen in order for this to occur. If I'm doing this in standing, it might look something like this. And if you haven't already, go ahead and start. Play around with some variations on. Again, you don't have to be able to reach the foot. Even reaching the knee is fine. Get that sense though of, of, of softening through the back body so that we're not just lifting the leg up, but we're rounding into it. So just different aspect of balance here. Now, if you have not yet switched sides, let's switch sides. Starting off with the knee in the center version. And now again that you have some familiarity with this, start to shift your attention elsewhere. Notice how your breath is feeling. Is it way up here in the chest? Can you drop it into the belly? Um, are you clenching your jaw? Are your eyes really tense? Are you gripping somewhere in the body? Do you feel rigid? Can you soften? Can you let this be playful? And if you haven't already, add the knee out to the side movement. Get a couple more. Good, and then come back to center. Oh, let everything have a shake out. And then we're going to briefly close here together. So again, you can be sitting or standing, your choice, or if you like, maybe even lying down if you're feeling like that would be the best way to go. Pausing for a moment wherever you get to and just checking in. Let's start with a big breath in, let it go with a sigh. And then let another big breath in and let it go with a sigh. <sighs> let your body begin that relaxation process.
Let go of any tension. Relax your feet, your legs, your hands and your arms. Relax your torso, belly, chest, back. Relax your neck and your head. Relax your face. Soften around your eyes, the inside of your mouth. Relax your tongue, upper and lower jaw. Let your breath be easy and comfortable. As we shift into these few moments of silence, if you notice the tension creeps back in or you get distracted, gently and kindly bring yourself back. Come back to a relaxed body and a soft and easy breath. Breathing in, breathing out, relaxed body. Let your breath deepen and let your body start to move. Wiggling fingers and toes, stretching, twisting, curling, anything that feels just right to help you release from relaxation and also any residual tension that might have come in from practicing with our, playing with our balance today. And then when you're ready, find your way up to seated if you were lying down and if you were standing and you're comfortable, feel free to stay there. So in yoga, the center of the chest or the space behind the sternum is the symbolic heart or heart center. If you'd like to join me, let's close with our hands there. You can bring some heat into the hands first, one hand to the center of the chest and then the other on top. Pause here for a moment and thank yourself for being here today, for giving yourself this gift of practice. Perhaps sending a thank you outwards as well to anyone or even anything that helped you to be here today. And thank you for sharing this time with me. I look forward to practicing with you again. And for those of you that would like to bring this balance practice into your everyday routine. You don't have to do this whole video. Once you get some ideas, let this inspire you and take some of these practices or make up some of your own and insert them into other things that you already do quite easily. For instance, while you're waiting for your kettle to boil, there's a perfect opportunity to try something with balance. Um, right before you brush your teeth or 
right before you uh, sit down into your office chair. So when you have these activities already set in your life, sneak in a little bit of balance work. And if you'd like to share your progress, um, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you'd like to add some of your own ideas for balance, please include those in the comment section as well. I look forward to seeing you again soon, I hope. Take care. Bye.